The prompt for day 12 was ancient, so I made these three columns, Doric columns. So we started off just by cutting off the cap and sort of three slices here. I knew I wanted to go for three. I originally wanted to do the three different types of column, but I ended up just sticking with three of the same. So I split them into these columns by using the technique of generating the final coordinates, the surface points, and then subtracting the original sort of object coordinates, the uh, generated subtract 0 0.5 times 2. And what this does is it makes your displacement. Um, uh, it means that you can use the final coordinates of your displacement and essentially generate shapes like this that I can use trigonometry to define quite simply. Um, I had a way there of using my snap values. So I've got 0, 1 and 2 for these three columns and this allows me to use mix RGBs and a subtract. Just how we did with the randomness and tiling tutorial, the second tutorial we did. The uh, This lets me do different profiles, different heights for the fleeting, things like this. Uh, at this point I've decided against doing the other two and I'm just doing repeat of the Doric column. I've added a time-based rotation and I'm just wanting to break these up into blocks. I was thinking about doing it manually there just with the RGB curves that I'm using for the profile. But I decided that actually I would break it up into slices like this using snap and white noise. If I then multiply the white noise by 110, that negates the z-axis and it means that I can give these a little bit of slide as they move around. So each block is individual and it's got, uh, it means that I can texture it and I can do things like adding cracks randomly across the different blocks. Just trying to leverage some more of the sort of more traditional procedural texturing techniques that we're using here. Cracks are Voronoi distance to edge or Voronoi crackle with a noise and linear light to make them a little bit wavy and then noise texture through a color ramp to make them break up. And then I'm also using a greater than on the white noise to mask them off certain blocks as well. As always, fade to sphere. The day 13 prompt was medieval, so I did this chapel church. It's, uh, it's called Kilpeck Church in Herefordshire. It's a very old, nearly a thousand year old church. So first thing I wanted to do was make sure I had enough geometry on the go. So I've used my squish node groups that I've used a few times before just to squeeze in the sides so that I, I don't actually compress those middle sections just because I don't want to lose my verticals when I use X and Y as you can see here I'm using my X gradient and that's allowing me to pull it out in a particular axis without actually deforming the shape. Uh, I'm then taking the second hand through a mix RGB and just scaling it, moving it down with a mapping node. Doing basically the same thing to get that roof ledge there, just pulling out the top section, scaling it in Y axis. Took me a little bit of time to work out how to do this round end. I initially thought I would plot it out explicitly, basically generating the coordinates explicitly and then subtract the original generated subtract 0 0.5 times 2 and that would give me the final positions when I put it to a displacement. However, I was having some difficulty getting everything to line up. I got these two sidewalls worked out and I was spent a little bit of time on it but it was fine and then getting the middle section to be rounded just using trigonometry as per. I was finding I was getting all of these shearing issues along the outside. Which you can see here, there's a sort of wedge that's being cut out. So the next thing I tried to do was just pull out a section, just with a bit of fall off there so that I can straighten up those edges without losing geometry. And then pull out the middle of the next section, again using trig, but I'm doing it in a more relative method here. So I'm just 
pulling out a section based on the angle using the uh, the position along that edge as the angle theta so it goes through a cosine then I can round that out using the RGB curve to be more manual and then I'm pulling up this roof section just in the center I've scaled it down to zero on the y-axis and I've pulled it up I wanted to get a few additional details on the go as well such as the little bell tower at the end and the two crosses that are on the gables so the way that i made the pitched roof was i just scaled down the top to zero but this did mean that i was losing a lot of geometry which i can now reclaim so working on my alpha mask just pulling out the sections that i want making sure that i've got them available and that my alpha masks they are smaller than my displacement masks just to make sure that they don't have any artifacts on the edge and then i'm just deforming this around trying to make a sort of disc circle donut looking thing uh, which i can then position just with the regular mapping node same again just duplicated the nodes pulled them across for the other one now for the actual bell tower i'm taking a rectangle and using the alpha again inside that space just so that i'm not getting the artifacts making a minimum here just so that I get the beveled corners and I can extrude this up and scale it so that I'm not having all of the issues. I noticed here that I was getting some really weird size stuff going on and it turns out this is because I was pulling mesh from the bottom so I just had to mask it to make sure I was only working on the top of the object and then I can do this fine. I'm now just pulling out some edges you can see in the reference there is some uh, some raised walls coming through the edge and as well there's all the corbels which are carvings essentially underneath grotesques um some really famous ones in this building as well so i wanted to make sure that i had those on the object working out how i'm going to do my doors here there's a little bit of dis distortion on the round top but i thought that was fine so i just pulling out a square a rectangle sorry with a rounded top using distance and I mask those two together and then I'm just using the zero to one gradient over that edge through a an RGB curve and then remapping that so that I get the bulged edge the stones around the doorway and then it also means that I can use the area which is greater than or that is one or greater as my mask for materials which I'm just starting to do now. I had some difficulty with materials because I ended up using box mapping. The mesh was kind of too twisted for me to use just generated. You can see here I've been masking out the difference between the wall material and the roof material. Just had to take the top section and then remove those two gables as well as the bell tower sides. So I just used a standard brick texture for the roof as well as the walls and then some flat colors just for the other sections and a little bit of random rotation just using a noise RGB as well as the photosphere and the clay wipe as usual. 